So we all like to joke about COVID. Matthew Inglesias, who is one of my least favorite people on Twitter, uh, made a joke. And his joke was, some personal news, I have contracted the novel, the novel coronavirus. Frankly, I think the virus should respect Father's Day more than this. It's kind of funny. <laughs> FYI, all future typos are due to long COVID. Oh, kind of funny. <laughs> that, so the, not a problem of any kind. Certainly not a problem. Well, you, that's where you'd be wrong. <laughs> Uh, this is the he said being inappropriate the appropriate time it's it's only 2022 the appropriate time to joke about COVID Kurt 2025 right I guess I thought if you had it aren't you automatically part of the oppressed group of having COVID <laughs> so this is a guy who got COVID and he's making what they call gallows humor right isn't that what that's called gallows humor and gallows humor was created by those about to be hung not for the freaking bourgeois, but it's always them who get in on this. They get a snit about it like her. So here's here's what Taylor Lorenz says. I'm glad it's a joke for you, Matt, and that you're uh. lucky enough to get access to great care. But for those who have had their lives destroyed by the virus and who have had loved ones die from or suffer with long covid, it's not funny. How you hope you can have a little more empathy, especially today. What's that, today? I don't know. Father's, it, Father's Day. Day. It got 727 likes. Wow. <laughs> Who put likes on that? Like 700 sock puppet Felicia Sanmez accounts? Yes. I have never seen something that unhinged and crazy. I don't think I've ever seen anything. You can't top it. Can you top that? You can't well, not top it. Not since the last story of the Washington Post person <laughs> being on Engine Crazy, certainly. <laughs> Making Matthew Iglesias seem like a very likable person is impressive. She did the same thing the with least. Dave Weigel. Didn't she just get demoted, Taylor Lorenz? And she's doing the same. She just watched the other chick crash and burn doing this. This is all they do for it. This is what they do now. That's just her. So they just live to be scolds. And to be overly sensitive about everything. Isn't that crazy? I'm sitting here with two women. Do you two ladies think that's crazy? Uh, I, I like that she's wagging her finger and scolding a bunch of assholes. <laughs> that's where I stand on this. All right. This the misogyny of COVID that's on display here. Back to Jimmy. She should return to her spinning as a, sp as a spinster. <laughs> uh, universal health care. This is a new study. So that uh, universal health care would have saved 338,000 lives from COVID. Americans are needlessly losing lives and money. So I don't know. Uh, is Taylor Lorenz upset about that? No. 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 Is she upset that we could have saved 338,000 lives? No. She's upset that someone made a joke. <laughs> She's not upset at real life. That's why Taylor Lorenz is a joke. How bored is she that that's the most offensive, like to pick him out, that guy of all the people to pick out to do that to for the lamest, I don't even know what the offense is of the joke. I mean, she must have been desperate. There wasn't anything more offensive on the internet that day for her. Really? I know. She Did you see she tweeted out that uh, the guy who was on the plane without a mask, it was like another journalist. And she's like, not to be that person, but, and just <laughs> went off on him. For not wearing a mask on a plane. Isn't yeah. her column called That Person with Taylor Lorenz? <laughs> <laughs> Here's another guy responding. He says, hi, Taylor. Can I joke about it? This is me. The first time I sat up after the coma they had kept had put me in due to COVID. It's nearly killed me four times in the 41 days I was in the coma. You have a choice. Crack jokes or let it destroy your mind. So I say start joking and keep it up. Wow. If only this guy knew his jokes were going to make Taylor uncomfortable. <laughs> Come on, bro. Try a little consideration. Taylor's firmly in the destroy your own mind camp. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, Taylor Lorenz then says to that guy. Oh, no. 
There's a big difference between joking about your own condition at your own expense and joking at the expense of others. Uh, Especially he, the, that's what he was doing. That's exactly what he did. He had COVID. Matthew and Glaces came down with COVID and he was making jokes about his own COVID. And his own spelling errors. And his own that's right. She says there's a big difference between joking about your own condition at, at, at your own expense and joking at the expense of others, especially those who are suffering. Continually minimalizing, minimizing an illness that is still devastating so many is harmful. I encourage you to learn about lateral ableism. How about I have lateral woke fatigue? How about that? Is there a pill for that? I think it's catchy. Oh Is there? Can you get vaccinated for lateral woke fatigue? Because I have it. Why did they hire all these people? I, they they all were like, "Oh, you're crazy. You should work for every major media <laughs> yes. publication in the cra crazy department about online non non issues." She's upset that a guy made a joke about COVID that he got. Ken Bone says, it has to be exhausting to be this sensitive about every single thing. You would think that, but she seems energized. Oversensitivity is the new self-care. <laughs> <laughs> My wife has long COVID. It's disrupted our lives in soul-crushing and apparently in irreparable ways. Because of this experience and the perspective it's given us over the last 18 months, I know what I'm talking about when I say this. Chill out. It was a joke. Way to go, Chris Larson. And then Chris Larson got blocked. <laughs> that's, a that's a journalist. Uh, so the, the crazy train of Taylor Lorenz. So when you read the Washington Post, that's what the kind of people they stand behind. She's a she's a star at the Washington Post. This nutball is a star <laughs> at the Washington Post. And now you know why our culture is broken because these see? people are elevated in it and it's everybody's in a contest to see who can be a bigger victim. Did Let me tell you, tweet, go ahead, uh, what tweet? Tweet about how, like, you know, uh, I went to a Swiss boarding school that was only like 190000 a year, and I was surrounded by privilege and rich people, so I know what it's like. <laughs> she knows what, what's like. She said that? Being, yes, about, because, you know, they always bring up she went to Swiss boarding school. It was just some dinky six-figure Swiss boarding school. She saw real privileged people while she was there, so she knows what it's like to be on the lower <laughs> she's a maniac. So she's saying that she was the poor kid at the Swiss boarding school? <laughs> yeah, like to counter other people bringing up how she's a chick that went to a Swiss boarding school talking about privilege. Wow. She's the victim, always. She is the victim. It's a huge victim contest. And I, I have something to tell people like Taylor Lorenz and people who think they're victims. Your pain is ordinary. Your pain is ordinary. You don't get a medal for being a victim. You get a medal for overcoming it and not letting it define you. But people like Taylor Lorenz and mental cases like her, that's their whole identity is that they're some kind of a victim. That's, the, that's their whole identity. They're defined by what, vic, what they are victims of. And online harassment does not make you a victim. Well, especially when you engage in it from the, the Washington Post. Post I know. <laughs> uh, online harassment makes you a, an important person. Nobody bothers to fuck with a nobody. Take it as a badge of honor. I do. And you don't have to check your mentions. I, I almost never mention, like, if I do a successful tweet, I might look at the responses to it. Like, hey, let's get some compliments, huh? <laughs> anyway, uh, Ken Bone, by the way, is that the Ken Bone who got famous because he was on a CNN 
town hall and he was wearing the red sweater. Was that mm -hmm. is that that Ken Bone? <laughs> yeah. All right. I like that guy, I think. That's a good that's good. What way to go, Ken Bone. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who looked like Ziggy kinda. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that guy. Hey, we're doing stand updates. Salt Lake City, Las Vegas, Chicago, Sacramento, and then San Diego, where I'm taping my new special. Go to jimmydorcomedy.com for a link for all the tickets for all our live shows. We're coming to your town, maybe. Mm -hmm.